Today, you'll learn how to set up WordPress using Vulture High Frequency combined with Open Lightspeed and CyberPanel. A lot of you have been asking for this exact tutorial, so here it is, probably one of the fastest possible ways of running WordPress on a budget. And if you've never used Vulture High Frequency before, there's a free 30-day trial link in the description so you can follow along with this tutorial completely for free. I'm Alex from Ideaspot. Let's get started. Okay, so the link in the description will look something like that, ideaspot.com.au slash vulture. Go ahead and click that one. From here, then we click sign up, fill in an email address and a password, I'm not a robot, and then create an account. You'll notice that by using the link in the description, you'll get $100 of free credit automatically applied. You don't need any code for that to work. That's automatic and that's for the first month. So you can do whatever you want for free during that first month. Another important point to note is that when you're filling this out, make sure you tick this box here for $0 deposit. You don't need to deposit anything to get started. You can do $0 just fine and then go ahead and continue. You'll also receive a welcome to a Vulture email like this one. Just go ahead and click that verify your email box. But now your account's pretty much ready to go. We can start setting up a server. So once we're logged into Vulture in our account, we're going to be under products here and we're going to go and deploy a new server. So that's this one here. From here, we're gonna choose high frequency. Now, high frequency gives us the best performance for the lowest possible price. I think this is the way to go on Vulture. And we choose our location. So choose something closest to your particular audience. Otherwise, probably North America is a good choice. I'll go with New York for this uh, demonstration. And then we're gonna choose our system for this. I wanna go with Ubuntu and I'm gonna go with 20.04. This is a recent version of Ubuntu that is supported by CyberPanel and it's a long-term support version as well. So 2004, I'd recommend that one. And uh, I'm gonna go with the cheapest version of this server. So $6 for one CPU, one gigabyte of memory. This will work fine for um, five or six small blogs quite easily. If you're gonna go with lots of websites or um, quite big uh, e-commerce stores, go with a larger instance, but this will work fine for what we're gonna do here. We don't need any of these things and we're gonna give our server a name I'll just call this one cyber demo and we should be all good to go. Let's deploy. So we'll get a success message here and we'll see some installing under the status there. So just wait while that installs. So after about a minute, we can see the status has changed to running. Now let's go and click ahead and click on that server. Now we can see the important details for our server. We've got our IP address there, a username and password to log into the server. So we'll use those in a second. First thing I'll do is I'll use this IP address and point a domain over to this address so that our server has a proper domain name. In this case, my domain is registered over on Namecheap.com, but you can use whatever you like. Namecheap.com is very cheap. Uh, you can get a .site for $2 and a .xyz for $1 if you just want something cheap to test with and try out ideas. So you could get that from Namecheap or GoDaddy is also quite cheap as well, but whatever you like, this step will be quite similar. We just need to get to our DNS manager. So in Namecheap, it's under manage and then we head to advanced DNS. So whatever you're using, just get to your DNS manager. We're gonna add some records to our DNS. I've got a couple default records that are in here. I'm just gonna delete those out. So just delete those ones out. And then we're gonna add a record. So I want an A record. I want to point that to the root. So that's an at symbol. And we're gonna get that IP address from Vulture here. So copy that. IP address and I'm going to punch that in there and then click the tick there. It's also worth adding a C name for our www. So we put www and we point that to our domain name, click the tick. That looks all good. Here we can actually use this tool to check our DNS propagation over on whatsmydns.net. Put your domain name in there for the A record and hit search. It's hitting our server IP, so that's all good. So now we want to log into the command line for this server. So we're going to log into this IP address. I'm using Windows, so I'm going to use Putty. If you're using a Mac, go ahead and use Terminal, launch up that Terminal app. Either way is going to be fine, but we just need to get into that IP address using the root username and the password that they've given us here. So let's go ahead and do that. You can get Putty for free over on putty.org. I've already installed it right here. So in Putty, I've just put the IP address in there. I'm going to save it as Cyber Panel and click Save, and then I'm going to open that up. First time you'll get a warning and you just go ahead and click yes on that one. And we are logging in as root here. So just type in root and the password, we can copy the password just by clicking that there. That'll copy the password into the clipboard. So we'll hit enter there and we can right click to paste in our password and then press enter. 
And now that we're all logged in, we can go ahead and install Cyber Panel. So I'm just gonna paste in this command to install Cyber Panel. I'm gonna put this on my blog as well, so you can just copy and paste it in. And this just comes from the Cyber Panel documentation. So let's paste that in, press enter, and wait for this to install. I'll put a link in the description to my blog, so you can just copy and paste that command and any other Cyber Panel hints and tips I find, I'll put on my blog too. So remember to go ahead and check that out. So we do have to wait a few seconds while this loads up, but then we'll get an option, Cyber Panel Installer to install Cyber Panel. So here we just press option number one and then press enter. And then now we wanna to choose to install Cyber Panel with open light speed. So that's the free version. So number one and press enter. And then install the full service for Cyber Panel. I'm gonna choose Y for yes and then enter. And do you want remote MySQL? I'm gonna choose no here and press enter. And now we press enter to choose the latest version of Cyber Panel. And we want to do a random default or set a password. So in this case, I'm gonna go with the random password, but you can choose to specify your own if you like here. And do you wanna install Memcached? I'm gonna go with yes. And Redis, I'm gonna go with capital Y for yes. And Watchdog, we just press enter here and that will load up the watchdog as well. So now we just wait for all of this to install. It's gonna go ahead and download all the things we need. So I'm just gonna pause the video here because this takes about 10 minutes to set up. So we've skipped ahead and we're all done here. We can see we've got Cyber Panel is successfully installed and it took 12 minutes to install. And we've got our uh, username and password for the panel and the web console. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy all this information here and just paste it into Notepad and keep it safe for later. So I'll just paste that in there. And we'll also notice that uh, down the bottom here, it says, would you like to restart your server now? So we're gonna go with yes here and go ahead and press enter. So our party will close here and we'll have to reboot and wait for that to reboot basically and come back in with a new connection. So I'll click okay and close this one out. So now that Cyber Panel is all installed and we wait a minute for our server to reboot, we can go to a new tab, go to our IP address and go to port 8090. So just put a colon there and then put 8090 and then press enter. And this should take us to our Cyber Panel dashboard. First time you try this, you'll get an SSL error. So we click advanced in Google Chrome and proceed. Your browser might be variable, but um, we basically proceed past this. I'll show you how to fix this with SSL in just a minute. So here we can get in with the admin password that we got during the setup. So that'll be the first password that we've got here and our user is admin. So let's plug that in there and go ahead and sign in. So here we are in Cyber Panel. So we can go ahead and start setting up websites now. So we've got websites on the left here. We can go and create a website. So here we're gonna put in our website details. If we just fill that in, I'm using the default package. Admin is the owner. The domain name in this example is ideaspot.site, but your domain will go there. Any email address of yours can go in there. And PHP, I'm gonna use 7.4. That's the most recent compatible version with WordPress at the moment. We can put all these additional features on and the additional feature SSL is the important one. Make sure you did the DNS step like I did earlier in the video. Make sure that IP is pointing to this IP like we did earlier in the video. So let's go ahead and create the website now. So this will take a minute for everything to set up properly. So just be patient with this bit. So that looks all good. We've got our success message. Next thing we'll do is SSL and we're gonna do host name SSL here. So we can go ahead and select that new website that we just made, ideaspot.site and issue SSL here and wait for that to issue. Now we get our success so we can actually access Cyber Panel through our domain name on port 8090 now. So let's go ahead and try that. So in our browser address, I've put ideaspot.site port 8090 there. And let's go ahead and go to our new Cyber Panel from our domain name. So we can actually load this up. Again, put in the same admin username and password we used before. Go ahead and sign in. Now we're ready to set up WordPress now. There's a couple of things we might tweak before we do that. First thing we'll go to is packages and let's modify the default package. So let's select the default. And here it limits our domains and disk space and things. We can change those limits here. For example, our disk space is limited to 1000 megabytes. We can make that 10,000, so that's 10 gig. Um, bandwidth is limited to uh, 1000. We can make it zero for unlimited. And uh, we'll go ahead and press modify package here. So that's def uh, successfully modified. Next thing we can do is edit the PHP config. So scroll down here, we've got PHP and we wanna edit the PHP config. 
So we're going to select our PHP here, 7.4. We're under the basic options here. So we can increase these to give WordPress a bit more resources. So we can make that memory limit. Instead of 128, we can make it 256. We can change that maximum upload file size. We could say 200 megabytes up uh, post max size. We could make that 80 megabytes, for example. So we've got some more flexibility when we're working in WordPress. Go ahead and save the changes there. And down the bottom, you'll get a PHP config saved. So we're pretty ready to go. We can go ahead and set up WordPress now. Let's list our websites out. And we've got the one website we should have here. So we've got ideaspot.site there. We can manage this one by clicking that manage button there. Here we are. We can see we've got SSL from Let's Encrypt. That will expire in 90 days, but it will automatically renew. So you don't have to worry about SSL renewals here. If we scroll down, we can go ahead and we can install our WordPress. So let's click that one. Now we just fill in the details we need for our WordPress website. So you put a title in the admin username. So just make up a nice username. I'm going to go with Ideaspot, a nice strong password, admin email address, and we leave the path blank to install on the home directory, and then we install. So just wait for this to install. So that looks all good. Now we can go back. Let's go back to websites and list our websites again under manage. The thing I want to do here is add SSL redirects. So we go to rewrite rules here. And then we select this one called force HTTP to HTTPS and then save that in. So now if we head over to ideaspot.site, we can see we've got SSL is working and we've got our default WordPress install. If we head over to our domain name slash wp-admin, we can get to our admin login and we can log in with the credentials that we use when we installed WordPress on CyberPanel. So click login. So here we are in WordPress. You can start building here under appearance and themes. Go ahead, install Astro or Cadence or a good theme like that and start building. Otherwise, you can go to uh, plugins and add new and use a tool like All-in-One Migration or Duplicator to bring your existing WordPress website over to your new installation here. So hopefully this has been useful. I'll also mention a couple of the security features here in CyberPanel. If we go down, we can see under security, we've got firewall. The firewall should already be set up by default. We can see that Subpanel has its default firewall already set up, ready to go. The other thing that we've got here is mod security. If we click mod security conf there, so that was mod security conf. We can see mod security is not installed yet. It's worth installing that. So that looks all good. The page will automatically refresh and we can go ahead, turn those things on. The next thing we can do is mod security rules packs. We can go ahead and turn on these rule packs as well. That's worth doing. We get an improved uh, web application firewall by doing this. The other thing that's worth doing is connecting to CyberPanel Cloud. This is a nice way of managing CyberPanel updates. So to do that, we need to go to users and we need to um, API access. So API access, and then we select admin and access enable and save changes there. This will allow us to connect to the cloud. So then we click connect. So CyberPanel Cloud is actually free to register. You can go ahead and use the sign up link if you haven't signed up already and pop in your uh, email and password in here and then go and sign in. Once we've signed in here, we go to connect CyberPanel and choose connect there. So we can connect, just make up a name. I'm going to call that Cyber Demo. We use our server's IP address. The username is admin and the password is the CyberPanel admin password to log into CyberPanel. We leave this empty for the default port and then we click connect and just wait for that to connect. So this looks all good. We've got our website connected to the CyberPanel cloud now. This is a really nice way of managing multiple servers, but most people are going to like this because it's a really nice way of implementing server upgrades. So we can go to settings and we can do upgrades on our servers. So we can go ahead and choose what version of CyberPanel. I'm already on the latest 2.1.1, but as they bring out new versions, you can update your CyberPanel in here. There's other loads of cool features in CyberPanel. For example, databases, you can get to PHP My Admin to edit your database. You can do backups here, so we can create backups. And also under uh, security here, we can do uh, Immunify AVs included as well, so you can do scans on your drive. And if you wanna edit any files manually on your website, we can go back to websites and they have a file manager for each website as well. So if we list websites under manage, and we'll find the file manager in here. So there we go. So this is a pretty standard looking file manager. We can go into our public HTML file and there we've got all of our WordPress files here. So if we want to edit anything manually, we can do that in here. For example, if you wanted to look at your config, you could 
click on the config there, right click, and you've got choices to edit. You can even um, compress folders up. So if you wanted to compress all your content up, you can go ahead and compress all your content and download a copy of it, for example. Lots of things you can do uh, all for free in CyberPanel. Now let's do a quick performance test before we wrap this video up. So we've got a simple Cadence starter template website here on WordPress. So I've just gone ahead and installed a basic template site here. We've got our uh, Lightspeed cache that comes automatic when we install WordPress on CyberPanel. So that's all ready to go. I also turn on the performance options in the Cadence theme customizer. Now with this set up in Google PageSpeed Insights, we are getting a perfect 100. Now that's 100 on mobile, so I'm really happy with that result. Uh, very simple little site here and loading only in 1.5 seconds. So a really nice result from Open Lightspeed and CyberPanel. I did notice that this result is pretty much identical to what we got on Vultra High Frequency when we tested on Cloudways a couple of weeks ago. We also got 1.5 seconds for our largest contentful paint. This is probably the most important number, that largest contentful paint. So Exactly the same site, uh, exactly the same hardware, Vulture High Frequency $6 plan, so running pretty much exactly the same. So this one is CyberPanel with open light speed. This is uh, Cloudways with Nginx, so very, uh, very good results from both. Doesn't really make a big difference on that Vulture High Frequency $6 plan, pretty much identical numbers between those two. I know a lot of you were asking for this cyber panel setup, and I'm glad I finally did one because I'm really happy with this result as well. So. Um, Remember to say thanks in the comments or hit like. Uh, you know, I'll do both if you can. That'll be really appreciated. Okay, so that wraps up setting up our web server. For email, I really like to keep my email separated from my web server. I just want to make sure my web server has the highest possible performance. I don't want to put extra load on the web server running email on the same server. So I've got tutorials for Zoho and Gmail and SMTP with Send in Blue. I'll put a couple videos up there so you can check those out as well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.